Hi everybody, welcome to our fourth and final week of ECE 107, Early Childhood Program Management. I'm so glad you're back. Um, I hope you have learned a lot during this course. I hope you realize that um, what we want to do is prepare you for the future. Some of you may have no plans currently of being a director of an early childhood center someday, but you never know what position you may be put into, um, sort of uh, having that experience thrust upon you. But uh, we want you to be ready to take that over just in case that's in your cards. Maybe you want to open your own ECE center someday out of your home, and the things that you have gathered over the past three weeks will help you with this endeavor. So I hope you have picked up some things and you're ready for our fourth and final week. Um, student question of the week is, does the portfolio have to be completed using PowerPoint? And the answer on that is no. This is actually optional. PowerPoint wor works great for this purpose. However, you might also use Google Slides. You might use Google Docs or you might use Word. Now, my preference as far as um, the presentation goes is to use either PowerPoint or Google Slides. These two seem to work the best as far as being able to change your content, insert pictures, insert graphs as needed, whatever you're needing to put into your eFolio. So you might keep that in mind. I hope that most of you have your eFolio um, mostly completed. I know I have a several students who seem to have their eFolio wrapped up and ready to go. Um, so uh, if you've looked at this week's content, you may have noticed that we don't have any additional chapters to cover this week. You're really just reviewing what you did over the past three weeks and you're putting together your eFolio. So what I wanted to do was go through the basic parts of the eFolio just one more time because it is so important. Um, if you look at our course syllabus for ECE 107, you'll notice that the eFolio and the quizzes account for 45% of your grade. So that means you need to do well on the quizzes and you need to turn that eFolio in in order to pass the class. Sometimes our final projects are maybe 100 points or two points, 200 points, but um, in this instance, your quizzes and your eFolio are 45% of your grade. So very important that you get it done, you get it turned in, and you do a good job on it. So um, let's just refresh real quick over the eFolio. You'll need to put these in your notes for your live lecture summary. Um, the main idea is that you're putting this together so that it could be presented to maybe a board of directors someday or a hiring panel who's trying to determine um, if you would make a great director or you may be able to present this to say a, a group of investors or bankers who you're trying to back your own center. So you want to um, have a lot of things down. You want to sound and present yourself as a professional. So one of the first things you'll have in there is your ECE program mission statement saying that you know uh, what you want to accomplish with your business. And you've probably noticed we've uh, given you several ECE mission statement examples over the past three weeks. And I've seen some amazing ones that some of you have already put together. So if you're unsure on this one, please contact me or send me your mission statement to look over so that uh, we know for sure you're on the right track. Okay. So a little bit about the mission statement. It might um, include what what you're offering at your business, what your philosophy is as far as early childhood education. So somebody should be able to read this paragraph or two paragraphs to understand a, a little bit more about you and what you're presenting. Okay, second, you're going to do an ECE program breakfast, snack, lunch, menu. Um, I've offered you several different templates that you could use on my course connection 
on our web page, but you can also find plenty of templates online or create your own by creating a graph um, in PowerPoint or Word or Google Slides, whatever you happen to be using. Uh, the most important thing is that you do include breakfast, snack, and a lunch menu, and it needs to have a good variety over the month. So think about what you're presenting. Think about if the children would be, uh, would like it, if they would eat it, would they get tired of, you know, too many chicken nuggets in one week, or um, maybe you're having, um, I don't know, oranges every day for breakfast. So be sure you have that variety in there. Next, your incident or accident report. There are tons of these online or you can create your own. I think I showed you the one that says boo-boo report. I love it. It's got the basics and would pass on to the parents if an accident did occur at the center and what caused it and what actions were taken afterwards. So um, overall, we want our parents informed of what's going on through the day. Number four, five, six, and seven are all interview questions. So put yourself in the place of interviewing an infant teacher, a preschool teacher, a school age teacher, and an assistant director for an ECE program and come up with 10 questions that you would like to ask them. Now, these can't all be the same. You might have some that are similar, but you do need to choose questions that are specific to that job. So think about what you would want out of an infant teacher, what you would want them to know versus the questions you would ask for, say, an assistant director. Let's see here. Next, number eight, you're going to have a new employee orientation checklist with at least 20 items that a new employee would need to know when they begin working at your center. You want them to have sort of a checklist to go by and the things that you want them to learn, say, in the first month or so or in the first week. So number nine, a job description. And again, this is when we're repeating things, a job description for an infant and toddler teacher. Number 10, a job description for a preschool teacher. And number 11, a job prescription or description for a school aged teacher. So you can find these online. You can find uh, greatsourcebnd.com to search for these job descriptions, or you may come up with one on your own. Should be a good paragraph long each, and be specific again to the job um, that's being advertised. So think about what you want out of each of these and what you want to convey to your potential teachers. Port two of the eFolio. Um, this is where you get to use a little bit of your Pinterest assignments that you've been gathering. So you have found floor plans for early childhood centers or classrooms. You have found playground layouts on Pinterest that you've pinned to that board. And you're able to use these examples for this purpose or um, hunt some down online if you weren't happy with the, those that you found in Pinterest. So number 12, you're going to include a layout of a classroom floor plan. Um, and if you can't find the specific classroom um, just by itself, you're welcome to use a whole center uh, floor plan as long as you indicate to me which classroom you are choosing and that you are then supplying in the next step. So, um, you know, you might say I'm going to use classroom number two and it needs to be detailed enough so that I could see where are the windows, where's the door, where are the major pieces of furniture. So I want to be able to picture this classroom. So you're going to pick, um, say, a toddler classroom, and then you're going to um, have a list of items to supply that chosen floor plan and that chosen age group. So you could use catalogs, you could use the internet, list the things that you would need in that classroom and the price. And I don't want you to get down to very specific things. You don't have to list every book you're going to have, but find um, the major pieces of furniture, the cubbies that you might need for storage, large toys, maybe you have a, a indoor play center, um, 
uh, like I said, you don't have to list every book. And uh, maybe you have a large rug that you've chosen to use for circle time. So I want to be able to, again, picture that classroom. And this gives you an idea of how much it really costs to supply a single classroom. And that will be good, a good resource for the future as well. Okay, number 14, layout of the playground. So you've got your own center. What's the playground going to look like? What are the major pieces of playground of Equipment that you're going to have out there so um, it needs to show kind of where the walkways are where the um, slide or climbing center would be where the sandbox would be whatever you're going to include on your playground where the um, splash pad might be a lot of new ECE centers include their own splash pad and I love that for summer days so you find the playground example, then the list of the supplies, just as we did on 13, only this time it's for the playground equipment. You may have to do a little research on the internet again or look in catalogs to see just how pricey some of these playground equipments can be. So it might help you make the decision someday of whether or not you want to buy a center that's already been set up that has a playground in place or if you want to build one from scratch and supply all new materials on that playground or in that center so you see how it all ties together here and we're all looking just basically towards the future and what might happen so efolio part one part two get it all done it all turned in the best part of teaching is that it matters. The hardest part of teaching is that every moment matters every day. Todd Whitaker, I love that. Sometimes we put a little too much stress on ourselves, but it's there. It's important. It's, it's important that we think about all of these details. And um, I want you thinking about the details as you go through building this eFolio experience. And as always, if you have any questions, please um, call me, text me, Facebook me, send me an email. It's the best way because I check that just it seems like constantly. So um, I'd be glad to get back with you. We have um, the rest of this week and everything's due on Sunday. So be sure to um, get all those things turned in because every point counts. All right, have a great week, everyone, and we're almost there. Good job.